This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know what they say about oxygen masks? Secure your mask before helping someone else. Therapy is kind of like that in slow motion. You have to work on yourself first so you can show up the way you want in your relationships and your life. So take care of yourself at betterhelp.com super. What if Harry Potter never inherited the Half-Blood Prince's copy of advanced potion making? Hey brother. Guys, let me tell you, I had a blast researching this question. Normally when we do these what ifs, it comes down to like changing one character's decision. But for this one, it literally comes down to a coin flip because Harry has literally no control over whether or not he gets this book. There's no manipulation in play. Nobody's trying to make him get it. There's no dark forces leading him to it. It is literally just dumb luck that he gets the prince's book, and yet it has massive plot implications. It's how Harry wins the Felix Felicis. It's how Harry knows how to save Ron after he's been poisoned. And throughout the entire year, it's just driving a wedge between Hermione and the boys. And then at one point, Harry has to go hide the book. And when he does that, he accidentally discovers discovers the location of the lost diadem of Ravenclaw. I mean, for an object Harry just ended up with, it certainly makes a splash, doesn't it? But what if things went just a little bit differently and Slughorn had switched which copy of advanced potion making went to each boy and Ron ended up with the book? Does he end up impressing Slughorn with his newfound potions expertise? Good to see you, Wallenby. Does he dive into the mystery of who the Half-Blood Prince is as deep as Harry does? And possibly more importantly, especially if you're Ron, if Harry doesn't have the book, what happens after Ron drinks the poison? Well, today we find out. Okay, so what if Harry never knew the Half-Blood Prince? How does his sixth year unfold if he doesn't randomly end up with this book on the first day of classes? I do suppose it's worth noting that it's not 100% random that he ends up with the book. I mean, no one's intending for it. It's not like Dumbledore or Snape is behind the scenes pulling the strings thinking, oh yes, now Harry will have access to Snape's old textbook. Yes, great. Ironically though, it is decisions explicitly made by Snape that lead Harry to ending up with it. As a refresher, heading into the sixth year, Harry had intended to start taking classes to become an Auror. But after he receives his OWL grades, he discovers he hasn't earned an O in potions, meaning that Professor Snape will no longer allow him into his potions class, so his dream is kind of dead in the water. And as such, Harry does not buy the required textbook for potions that year. But when Harry gets to school, McGonagall tells him Slughorn is happy to accept students who got an E in OWLs, and that he should just go ahead and take the class. Potter. Take Weasley with you. He looks far too happy over there. When he gets there, Slughorn then fishes out two old copies of the textbooks and just hands one to each boy. And Harry ends up with the Half-Blood Prince's copy of Advanced Potion Making. I mean, it literally comes down to a coin flip. But getting that book changes everything for Harry. The Half-Blood Prince ends up being this sort of like silent friend and mentor he can continuously turn back to for more inspiration and new ideas. But let's imagine the coin falls the other way and Ron is the one who ends up with the textbook. Does he crack it open and immediately start following the prince's instructions? Uh, 100% he does for a couple of reasons. One, if you'll recall, in that first lesson, Slughorn is offering the Felix Felicis as a reward to whoever can brew the best draft of living death. And right out of the gate, Ron knows he's not gonna beat Hermione in potions, so what does he have to lose? Why not try something different? And beyond that, in the main story, he goes on to praise Harry for taking a risk. He only followed different instructions to ours, said Ron. Could have been a catastrophe, couldn't it? But it took a risk and it paid off. So assuming Ron follows the instructions and gets the same results as Harry, that means Ron is actually the one who wins the Felix Felicis. And, and if Slughorn's reaction to Ron's potion is anything like it is for Harry's, he also earns some serious first impression points with Slughorn. The clear winner. Excellent, excellent, Harry. Good Lord. It's clear you've inherited your mother's talent. Now, no doubt this bothers Hermione as much as it usually does, if not more. I mean, it's one thing to be outdone by Harry, but by Ron. Ron in potions. He wasn't even going to take this class. On the other hand, though, this sets Ron up for success with Slughorn to be invited to the Slug Club parties that year. I mean, think about it. We already know Slughorn is impressed with Ginny because he invited her to the party on the train. And now Harry Potter's best friend is also like a potions making expert. Yeah. He's going to those parties. One side note, I just thought it was worth noting that even if Ron or Harry didn't win the Felix Felicis, Hermione definitely would have. So basically no matter what, the Golden Trio was going to end up with the Felix Felicis. Either way, two chapters later in the book, Harry has usually already become Slughorn's star pupil. So I see no reason Ron wouldn't ascend the ranks in the same way. The difference is I don't think Ron would be examining every single page of the book between classes the way that Harry usually does. I mean, at one point he even says, 
that sort of behavior, as Ron rightly said, was indecent in anybody except Hermione, who was simply weird that way. One of the big themes in Harry Potter is Harry constantly looking for that like next father figure and Sirius would have just died and now this half-blood prince guy seems to be such a good guide, which I think is why Harry gets so invested in the book. But Ron doesn't really need any of that, so I think he's happy to lean on the book to excel in potions, but otherwise it's just the book he has. But so what does Ron do with the potion? I mean, the Gryffindor Quidditch tryouts are coming up. That seems like a good place for it, right? Alas, no. I do not think Ron would use the potion to excel in tryouts. If anything, he might even come to tryouts feeling a lot more confident simply because of his invitation to slug club parties and because he's doing so well in potions. Certainly McLagan wouldn't seem nearly as intimidating to Ron if Ron is also getting so much glory from Slughorn. As such, I don't think Hermione would need to confund McLagan because Ron is likely to just make the team on his own. In fact, she might be less likely to do it anyway if she's annoyed at Ron for his like unfair advantage in potions. But that said, typically she's annoyed with Harry as well and she helps out anyway. So either way, Ron's gonna make the team. Yay. Moving past Quidditch, at this point, Harry starts reading more and more of the book and learns a bunch of little useful spells like Muffliato and the toenail growing hex and Langlock and Sectum Sempra. But again, I just don't think Ron would be as invested in the book as Harry usually gets. So I think they probably just miss out on a bunch of these fun little spells, which actually doesn't make a huge difference other than obviously Sectum Sempra, but that'll come up later, don't worry. Ron having the book also means that Harry won't Levicorpus Ron out of bed one day or vice versa. But the only big takeaway from that is that Harry remembers his dad using the same spell on Snape in the pensive and he starts to wonder whether the Half-Blood Prince could be his dad, which of course James isn't, so it's not even a connection that matters. On the flip side though, Hermione is normally very against using any of the spells from the Half-Blood Prince's book and she gets super annoyed at Harry and Ron and refuses to partake whenever they've used any of them. So if they're not using them, she's probably just a lot more friendly and forgiving about the book. Plus, if Ron is being invited to the Slug Club parties, then all three of them, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, are probably going because now it's not like Ron's being left out. That means Ron and Hermione would get to have more special like quality time together and that Harry would be going, meaning he might realize his feelings for Ginny a little bit earlier in the story. The other great thing about Ron being in the Slug Club means that he'd be aware ahead of time that you could invite someone to the Christmas party, which means I have to imagine Ron and Hermione just arranged to go together at that point since they clearly like each other in this book and because Hermione basically yelled at him to do this exact thing the last time he missed out on it. Next time there's a ball, pluck up the courage and ask me before somebody else does. Oh gosh, you guys, we're not careful. Ron might not ever end up bidding Lavender this time around. Ah, but what about Harry and Ginny? Would they go to the Christmas party together? I don't think so. The necklace thing with Katie Bell would still happen, so she would be off the Quidditch team, which means Dean would be on the Quidditch team, and usually Ginny and Dean are already dating by this point, so... No, I don't think they would go to the party together. It takes Harry a long time to reconcile how he thinks Ron would feel about him dating his sister in the main story, and I don't really see why that would be any different, so... Yeah, Harry probably just still takes Luna though because he's good people like that. But before we get to the Christmas party, we do have some Felix Felicis shenanigans we need to talk about because before the Christmas party is the big Gryffindor Slytherin Quidditch match where usually Ron is feeling pretty down on himself about his skills as a keeper. And this is where Harry pulls the whole placebo thing on Ron and tricks him into playing well, thinking he's been spiked with Felix Felicis. But obviously Harry can't placebo Ron into playing well this time because Harry doesn't have the potion. So would Ron just take it on his own? I doubt it. In the main story, Ron is delighted to think that Harry has cheated on his behalf, but I don't think he would actually go as far as to intentionally cheat. Plus, it's pretty possible that given his newfound potions glory with Slughorn and his prospect of going to the Christmas party with Hermione, that Ron might not even need the encouragement. He's probably just feeling a lot better about himself in general. But so the Quidditch match can then go two ways. If Ron is actually just feeling confident and plays well like he usually does, then he's able to win and Hermione can be proud of him without the taint of the Felix Felicis this time. Because normally Ron gets upset at Hermione because Hermione thinks he only played well because of Felix Felicis and he's like, no, see, I didn't need it. And she's like, wait, no, but you thought you had it too. And then it just like drives the big wedge and that's what leads Ron directly to Lavender. But if there's no Felix at all, then that can happen. The other thing that could happen though is that Ron just does play poorly and they lose, in which case there's no after party. So he still doesn't hook up with Lavender. And then Hermione can just console him as a friend because they like each other. Either way, we successfully dodge Lavender Brown. Bravo everyone, bravo. One, one. Ramilda Vane, however, is still on the hunt for Harry and she still sends him the love potion spiked box of chocolate called 
cauldrons, which Hermione forewarns him about. That'll be important in a second, but for now, it's the Christmas party. Hooray! Half-blood prince-wise, this is usually where Slughorn tries to give Snape a big compliment for having taught Harry to be so good at potions, and Snape's like, I've never thought Potter was very good at potions at all. <laughs> Normally, this incident leads Snape to start suspecting the exact truth, that Harry does, in fact, have his old textbook. And undoubtedly, it's possible Slughorn tries to give Ron the same compliment in front of Snape, but really, that doesn't make a huge difference other than maybe Snape suspects Ron of having his book. Either way, Harry still trails Snape and Malfoy and learns that they are definitely up to something. Christmas at the Burrow is pretty much the exact same, other than Harry has a lot less conversations about the identity of the Half-Blood Prince because he doesn't have like the Levit Corpus spell to match up with his dad to ask Lupin about. And overall, I think Harry would be just less invested in the book. And Ron is, of course, not that interested in who the Half-Blood Prince is either because he just loves that he's doing well at potions. All right, guys, now we need to take a quick break to tell you about today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Of all the packages that get dropped off at my door each month, my box of awesome from Bespoke Post is always the one I am like so excited to open because they're always full of just the most cool and unique gear from the best small businesses from around the world. I'll go ahead and tell you about a couple of the ones I've really liked so far. Number one, I've had the bag from the Weekender box for years now and I just love it. It's such a perfect size for a weekend trip and it looks so sharp. I can tell you that Ben and I both have the Explore box, which is great for like hiking if you're in an area that has a lot of that. It comes with a little headlamp and a water bottle and a bag that is light and durable for the outdoors. And next month, I am eyeing up the Lays box, which comes with these comfy looking shorts for the dog days of summer. I mean, I just love the way they look. And it also comes with these nice no-so shocks and this face moisturizer for post-sweat skin. Gotta take care of your skin, guys. But the real beauty of Bespoke Post is that they just have so much variety. And if you don't know where to start, they actually have a quiz over at boxofawesome.com that'll help you narrow in on exactly the box that's right for you. Plus, with each box of awesome, you are supporting a small business. It is free to sign up and you can skip a month whenever you want. Plus, plus, you can get 20% off your first box when you head over to boxofawesome.com and enter promo code SUPER at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com. Use promo code SUPER at checkout for 20% off. Boxofawesome.com, promo code SUPER. Link in the description down below. But back at school, we start to get into some big stuff here because now Harry is tasked with getting the memory from Slughorn. And as we all know, he usually uses the Felix Felicis to do this, but this time he won't have it. So what do? And just FYI, that's a big deal because getting that memory is how Dumbledore lands on seven Horcruxes that they need to destroy, but actually eight because he's just not going to tell Harry until later on. But you, you know what I mean. Post-Christmas is also when Slughorn starts teaching about antidotes, though. So Ron would suddenly be bad at potions again because the prince doesn't offer a whole lot of direction in this way. Harry usually dodges this opening lesson by seeing the prince's lone note that you should just use a bezoar instead. So would Ron do the same thing? Personally, I think so. I mean, he's going to be absolutely clueless, but he's definitely going to read just use a bezoar. So what does he have to lose, right? Although we do have to wonder about Hermione in this situation, because usually she's not on great speaking terms with Ron at this point, because he's dating Lavender, but this time they'd be on much better speaking terms. That made me laugh. You haven't spoken in weeks. So would she be willing to help Harry and Ron in this class if she's not mad about the whole Lavender situation, which would be a big deal because then Ron wouldn't get the Bezoar, and the Bezoar that Slughorn takes from Harry is literally the one they used to save Ron later on. But even if she wanted to help the boys, I don't think she would even have the time. I mean, in the main story, she's going full tilt. This entire class has like all these little potion models ahead of her at the end of it, has cut off some of her hair and still isn't done. So yeah, I think Ron and Harry sort of panic for the whole class and then Ron goes and grabs the Bezoar and wins 10 points for sheer cheek. Which brings us to Ron's birthday, where as usual, he wakes up and begins gorging himself on sweets, including the cauldron cakes from Ramel de Vain, spiked with the love potion. Typically, Harry realizes what has happened and brings Ron down to Slughorn, and I think they do still eventually end up there. But since Ron's not dating Lavender, him and Hermione and Harry are on much better speaking terms right now. She's already good at making antidotes, and she already knew about the love potions from Ramel de Vain, so you don't even have to explain that away. So I would imagine Harry and and Ron go to Hermione first, but from there, she would suggest the three of them go down to Slughorn to make sure they get the antidote right. I thought this call for more practiced hands, sir. In fact, she might even suggest to Harry that if this works, maybe you can corner Slughorn and ask him about the Horcruxes. So all three of them make it down there, Slughorn cures Ron, busts out the oak matured mead, and Ron is immediately poisoned again. This time, however, Harry is not prepped with the personal first-hand information about the Bezoar. So what happens? Is he able to save Ron? Does Ron die? 
No, because while Harry himself might not have personally retained the Bezor information like he usually does, I think Hermione still would have. She is always paying attention in class. Like even back in Order of the Phoenix, she's paying attention to whatever Harry says at the DA meetings and even quotes some of his own lines back to him. And he's like, what, you're treating me like a teacher? So Slughorn definitely panics and as ever is not much help in the situation, but Hermione realizes what is happening and instructs Harry to help her look for the Bezor. Together, they find it, shove it in Ron's mouth, and he's saved. From there, Hermione escorts Ron up to the hospital wing, and Harry finally is able to ask Slughorn about the Horcruxes. Which would actually be the first time he's asking him about it so far, because usually he does it after the Bezor incident, thinking Slughorn's in such a good mood, maybe he can get it out of him, but Ron would have done that, not Harry this time, so here we go, it's now. Either way though, doesn't go well. Slughorn immediately shuns him and just cancels all future Slug Club parties so he doesn't have to be alone with Harry again. In any case, Ron is still hospitalized, meaning that he has to sit the next Quidditch match out, Cormac McClagan is in, he cracks Harry's skull with the bat, Harry is hospitalized, and that's when he six Dobby and Creature on Malfoy. They report back that Malfoy is using the Room of Requirement, but don't know what he's using it for. Harry tries to get in, but is unsuccessful. Which brings us to the sixth year's apparition test, where as usual, Ron is feeling pretty nervous, but jokes that maybe he should use the Felix Felicis to try and pass. Obviously, Hermione shuts this down, not in favor of cheating at all, but it does spark an idea in her mind that Harry should use the Felix Felicis to try and get the memory out of Slughorn. I mean, after all, with everyone at the apparition test, there will only be three of them in class today. All well, I need a bit of luck. I imagine both boys kind of know she's right about this, but Ron doesn't want to give up his Felix Felicis that he worked so hard to win, and I think Harry would be reluctant to take it from Ron. Instead, Harry offers a different solution. He asks Ron, since he won't be in class today, if he can borrow his copy of Advanced Potion Making in hopes of getting Slughorn in a good enough mood with a well-brewed potion that he can ask him about the Horcruxes successfully. Ron seizes this opportunity to keep the Felix Felicis and sends Harry off to class with the Half-Blood Prince's copy of Advanced Potion Making. And this is a pretty interesting class because there's only three people there. Harry, Ernie McMillan, and Draco Malfoy, who Harry knows is up to something. And the assignment is the same as ever, just brew something fun. So Harry begins flipping through all of the pages of the Half-Blood Prince's potion book, trying to land on a good potion that will fill the requirements of the class while avoiding the sneers of Draco Malfoy. And that that is when he comes across a particular spell, Sectum Sembra, for enemies. Staring at Draco, Harry memorizes the spell, but doesn't use it in class, and of course settles on brewing some euphoria, which he does tremendously, and Slughorn is very impressed, but he doesn't drink any of it. Blast! On Ron's side of things, I think he actually would pass the apparition test this year because he's just feeling so much more confident about everything. And after hearing that Harry was unable to get the memory, but so happy that he passed the apparition test, I think Ron would consent to giving Harry a sip of the Felix Felicis to get the memory. Hermione is super pleased with this generosity, and so Harry takes the sip and ends up, as usual, down at Hagrid's for Aragorn's funeral. And the night goes pretty much the same. Slughorn shows up as well, and together they drink the night away, and Harry is able to secure the memory. Yes! You may have noticed that so far, it seems like things are going about as usual, but we are coming up on a pretty big change here. Because it's not long after this where Harry sees Draco and Moaning Myrtle together on the Marauder's map. He immediately jumps into action to try and eavesdrop on them to see if he can figure out what Malfoy's up to, ends up in a duel with him where he now unleashes Sectum Sempra. Uh, hoops. That's a lot of blood. As usual, Snape arrives on the scene and can figure out exactly what has happened and commands Harry to bring him all of his textbooks. Harry always recognizes that Snape is totally onto him and he gets out of the situation by borrowing Ron's textbook and then is saved by the fact that Ron wrote his name in the textbook using one of Fred and George's joke quills so that instead of saying Ron Weasley, it says Runil Waslib, which Harry somehow manages to pass off as his own nickname. Oh, I know what his nickname is, Potter. This time, however, Harry can just bring him his actual textbook, which has his actual name in it and is not Snape's old textbook. He'll still get all the detentions with Snape, but the Half-Blood Prince copy of the book remains safe. But the real downside for Harry, though, is because he doesn't need to protect the Half-Blood Prince's copy of Advanced Potion Making this time, he doesn't go to the Room of Requirement to hide it. And this could pose as a pretty big problem for Harry because, as we all know, when he hides the book in the Room of Requirement, he usually marks its spot with a dummy wearing the Lost Diadem of Ravenclaw. Meaning later on, when he 
realizes what he's looking for, he knows exactly where to find it. But if he never hides the book, then one, he's not gonna know where in the room the diadem is, and two, he's never going to have been in the room of hidden things at all. Now, to be fair, he would still learn that the room of hidden things existed because he'd still run into Trelawney who gets thrown out of the room by Draco, at which point she tells him she was about to go hide some sherry bottles. And later on, he would still learn what Draco repaired inside the room of hidden things, but he would never have any firsthand experience in the room. That said, the fact that he still learns about Draco's success means he's still able to warn Ron and Hermione that something bad might be happening later that night, so he can still like prepare them and tell them to drink the Felix Felicis if something does go wrong. But then I think the rest of the night pretty much goes the same. Harry and Dumbledore go retrieve the fake locket and return to a trap at the school. Snape kills Dumbledore, Harry pursues Snape, at which point Snape could still reveal that he was the Half-Blood Prince, which Harry might actually have some context for because he was still around the book. And interestingly, this means that the following year, the Golden Tree will still have access to Snape's book because they wouldn't have hidden it in the Room of Requirement. However, I doubt they put too much trust into anything Snape wrote after he killed Dumbledore. I mean, maybe they could use it to make better potions on their travels? Clearly Ron had been succeeding in that endeavor all year, but Harry also would have used Sectum Sempra, which they would have considered pretty dark magic. But the big, big problem is what happens when they go looking for the diadem. Because even if Harry can reason out that it's in the Room of Requirement, he's still not gonna know the exact prompt to open it to get into the room of hidden things. And even if he does figure that much out, the room is massive. However, there is still some hope if Crab shows up and lights the entire room ablaze with the fiend fire, then maybe they could just trust that the fire destroyed it, which they would probably be correct about. But Harry would be putting a lot of faith in the fact that that happened, having not like witnessed the tiara go up in flames. And that's assuming he can access the room at all to begin with. Because if he can't, then we get to the final duel in the Great Hall, things will mostly go down the same, except when Voldemort's spell backfires into himself, he won't die, die. He'll just be reduced to vapor like he was when he tried to kill Harry as a baby because the diadem will still be anchoring him to the mortal world. Meaning he could still return to haunt Harry once again. But there you go, guys. That's what happens if Harry never receives the Half-Blood Prince's copy of Advanced Potion Making. What was wild to me about this was that so much of the year ends up kind of going the same way, which is surprising because the book commands so much of Harry's attention throughout that year and seems responsible for so many things like Harry winning the potion and saving Ron's life. But what was fun about uncovering this is that the book is very helpful, but it also causes a lot of strife between the characters. And it turns out without the book there, they just get along and work better together to solve a lot of the problems anyway. It was also pretty comforting to me that Harry randomly getting this book wasn't a key cog in defeating Voldemort. Like yes, the magical luck of the potion was important, but not the the random luck of who got which book. Instead, I think Harry having the prince's copy of the book offers a lot more to us, the reader, to help us understand how the relationship between Harry and Snape might have been if they could have ever gotten over their grudges towards each other. Turns out they could have been a pretty formidable team, and Harry having the book also helps set up the redemption for Snape at the end of the next book. Air quotes redemption, right? I mean, personal grudge against Harry aside, he's still mean to so many of the other students for no reason. Come on, dude. But guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Harry Potter action from us. If you wanna see what would happen if Neville had been the chosen one instead of Harry, I recommend this video right here. But Ben, otherwise, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother.